Hey guys, it's Artsy, and in today's video, I'm going to be using GDevelop to create a video game in one weekend, so let's get into it. So I obviously started off by buying the game, or the game making software, except for I don't have footage of that. Don't worry, it's going to become a consistent theme throughout this video. But let's move on anyways. So I opened up my thing and had no idea what I was doing, but luckily, GDevelop, by the way, this is not sponsored, I just... We, my dad and I were doing some research and we looked up what was the easiest way to make a video game and this was one of the answers, so we went with it. So they luckily provided a very nice tutorial where a man really explained everything in detail, but um, I'm bad at following along with stuff, But so that was a little trickier. So let's just go on to the drawings and start with the easy things. I made this little sprite of my character. I was going to make her hair brown, but then I decided to go with blue because brown was too simple. Also, I kind of realized this looks like, um, the character looks a lot like a character from this video game, Grease. She also has blue hair and a, like, cloak type of thing, but different kind of blue hair, and it, I did, forgot the color scheme of that character. I, I do love that game, but I didn't realize that I was copying, so I'm just gonna take this and export it to my folder, which is conveniently named Game. Then, fail to understand the principles of the editing software, and mess up importing it and have to re-import it several times until it actually works. But in that time, we're just gonna make a little walk animation. I was in the car with my dad at this point, so I had to redo a lot of lines because it was kind of wobbly. Not his fault at all, he's a good driver sometimes. But I added a little background, which ended up being entirely useless because I can't use it. And I kind of knew that, but I added one anyways. Anyways, I colored in my character and I just made it very simple. I played around with feet, then decided I hated them. So got rid of the feet, added a shadow, then decided I hated it and got rid of the shadow. So after some playing around with the game and the character sprite, I had a little girl that could walk, kind of. Um, then I reference back to the video a lot. Uh, I think that most of the time during the beginning part of this process was just watching the video and then trying to replicate what he replicated, but we're going to get back to that in a minute. And, you know, I'm procrastinating, but I did name my character. I asked what she should be named and then my stepmom told me that she kind of looked like Sailor Moon, so we just named her Moon and I think that it kind of stuck, but we don't have a name for our game. So again, we exported it and put it in the conveniently file, conveniently named file called game. And then proceeded to, again, not actually do anything and just procrastinate and draw backgrounds. The colors in this game, I wanted them to be like bright, but also not contrast with each other too much. I wanted our main character to kind of pop and stand out, but I didn't want it just to be boring. Kind of like Yoshi's World, like it has a lot of colors, but you're not getting confused. So I made the trees in the foreground lighter, the trees in the background darker, and the trees in the middle a, you know, medium shade and... Then I put a base, which I, you know, put in and then realized that, like many things in this video game, it did not work on the first try. Who's surprised? But, you know, it's a bit of a process. It Also, I should probably preface this by saying, um, this isn't the greatest video game you'll ever see. There's no point to it. You can open a chest, then you go into a cave, there's nothing in the cave, and then you're forced to die. Spoilers. So maybe don't consider this like a tutorial this is just something i did over a weekend and i'm gonna continue to work on it and make progress so i'll keep you guys updated maybe maybe so moment of truth i named my sprite and then i added it into the world and it wasn't really showing up so i had to change the size of the sprite and then it did show up but it was a little bit too big so then we had to change it again but then finally we got it to work and everything worked out in the end which is good so now seems like a wonderful time to mention why we chose DG to develop. Well, that's because here you can see that we didn't have to do barely any coding up until this point, and it's really intuitive for like beginners to use. And I'm not trying to you know create like the next big thing. I mean, I kind of am, but you know, currently I'm not trying to create the next big thing. So it was just for a little passion project for a weekend. It seemed like the best choice because it wasn't gonna take us all day every single day for the next two years to create a game. But we did have some issues with speeds of things because um, our little sprite, her idle animation, was moving way too fast. So, you know, obviously I referenced back to the video I was watching, skipped around a little bit to see how they made her a little bit slower. And then I kind of applied that to myself and it looked definitely much better <laughs> that way. 
The reason that it wasn't working earlier, by the way, with the trees and the ground was because the trees and the ground were not on the same, were on the same level or, you know, were on the same canvas. So they were kind of competing and she was just spawning behind or like not even behind, just kind of not in existence because the trees were set as a background that you can walk on. And so she kind of was like clipping through them because they were just taking up the whole screen. So we figured that that out and we just put in a, you know, floor bottom like that, like you can see there. And then we added the trees behind her and it worked kind of. The running animation I put in did not work. Um, so, you know, it was back to the drawing board with that one again. So, so but after a little bit of tweaking, we figured it out. Basically, the problem was that you have separators between every little, you know, instruction line in the coding and we put one, the running stuff in all one separator. So basically it was telling the game, sorry to get kind of techy here, that if you press both arrows at once and the jump button, it would only jump instead of one arrow to jump one way and then one arrow to jump the other way. Oh, and then even when we fixed that, it still didn't work again. So, you know, back to the video and it kind of worked at some point after a little bit of tweaking. I cut out the tweaking, but you know, you see the issue we're having here. It worked, but it was really glitchy and it was only going one way. So as you can expect, actually nobody expected that. It was a hitbox problem and we fixed the hitbox problem then and we fixed the turning, which I also cut out because it was boring. And then we had a little girl who can run. And I thought that that was so cool at the time. I mean, it is cool, but I thought that it was the greatest thing ever. My dad suggested that I add in a little you know, background and some more interesting elements so it wasn't just like a simple side scroller with nothing. So I added in an island with some flowing water and I think that that was the best part. This is so pretty. I love the way that the bridge turned out. And I also added in a little log that she can jump on. Doing the layers for the um, island was kind of interesting but also difficult. So that was that, and but we figured it out in the end, and I separated them all onto different layers so it would not interfere with the way that she actually moves. And then I decided to add another little island with a chest on it. I wasn't quite sure how I was going to figure it out, the chest yet, but we got to it eventually. And I think that this is nearing the end of day one because I was tired and I wanted to go to bed and I felt like I would figure out some of the game mechanics tomorrow. So that is the end of day one, and I think that this was the day I got a lot done. So basically this is going to be really confusing, but my game looks entirely different right now, and here's what it looks like. I basically took all of the things, did some coding, and changed the hitboxes, and then we had another island with a chest on it, or not yet a chest on it, but that was going to have a chest on it with a stump, and I didn't get footage of this. I think I forgot to include it, frankly. It wasn't a, it wasn't on purpose. But here's me making the little chest animation that I was going to implement of it opening. And by this point, I kind of had some knowledge of the game and how it like worked and stuff. So I wasn't as lost when I was actually figuring out the chest stuff. And I did get it to work with some tweaking on my own. I stopped completely relying on the video day two and that was like really good and refreshing. But here's a clip of me. And no, that pizza was not my dinner. That was my breakfast after having it for dinner the previous night. You know, who doesn't like a morning pizza? I'm definitely a morning pizza person myself. And anyways, I was done with the chest, so then I added it into the game. And, you know, it took some tweaking, like everything, everything else. But I think that this was the part of the game that went the most smoothly, that I was the most proud of. I added all of the little clips in separately, which was what was the way it's supposed to be. I did some coding, which I think I'm going to speed through because, to be honest, it's not that interesting. I added my little chest in, and frankly, I'm kind of running out of things to talk about, so I'm just going to talk about my life. How have you guys been? You know, how has the world been in your life? Um, recently, I got into the school I'm going to go to next year for my second year of high school, and that's really cool. 
Anyways, so we're opening up the game and I'm now I have the little jumping animation. I think that everything looks really nice and smooth. My dad was even impressed and he's rarely impressed by well, he's impressed with me, but like not the kind of way. And when I opened up the chest, it did not work. Um, I'm just gonna cut out me fixing it and just show you the way it looked when it did work. Also, clicking on the chest unlocks the ability for you to jump and have a like slow glide down. But I'll touch more on that later when I go show you the clip of the final game. But I was watching videos wh while I was working on this and uh, I made another island because, you know, what's when do you quit? When do I quit? Um, I made another island. It has a little cave in it that you can only access after opening the chest to get the ability, which is kind of the point of the game. And, you know, I was going to add a person in there telling you something, like telling you to jump down, like, and to trust them. And then when you jump down, you die. My dad added that mechanic, by the way. Anyway, that's, there's more on that later in the game. Hi again. I got some cookies. Um, so basically we hit a roadblock um uh pay wall we paid for it and then i played around with some music okay so i'd actually be lying if i said that i did the music um enjoy some nice calming you know playing around with some music um in the background but my friend actually did this um a lot of these are sped up but she did a very nice job she made the jumping sound effect it's actually her voice and then she played the background music that's in the game and the opening the chest music and then i did the death music which you'll see later on but um we just did it in garage band we had some problems with exporting it but i cut most of that out um then we there was some coding and it sounded like this in the end and more coding And then after we demoed the game a little bit, there was back to GarageBand to figure out a few more things. That was pretty quick. We just needed to adjust some of the sounds to make them a little bit quieter and add in the, you know, death sound. And then I think that we were done on GarageBand for that. And then finally it was my chance to make a little cloud barrier at the bottom where if you hit it, you die. And I am going to be, as I said earlier, I'm transparent about this. I did not do that. My dad figured out all of that stuff. Um, thank you, dad. That was really cool of you. Um, I had no idea how to figure it out, but somehow, I don't know, he watched a video. I looked over the footage. It looks like he just played around with it for a while. And that was it. I added in my cloud bottom. And then there's a long clip of him figuring things out for me. I don't know guys, can you tell I don't script my videos? I think it's pretty obvious based on the, I'm running out of things to talk about basically. But the game has these things called repeating sprites where basically if you just drag it, drag it down, you just saw it or across it goes uh, across. And here is a little clip of me falling to the bottom and dying. So that was really cool. I'm glad that that worked out. And then uh, um, we had to figure out a few more things, but it eventually, you know, just set me back immediately, and that was that was probably the highlight of that day. Day two was pretty boring, and then day three was very boring. So basically, I made a video game in one day, but what kind of title is that? And then we had to play around with the jumping, because she was jumping too far, then not far enough, and I just played around with the gravity and the jump speed and stuff until we finally got something we were somewhat happy with. Then day three. So day three was definitely the shortest day. I finished work at like noon or one because I had to go back to my mom's house. My parents are divorced if you don't know. Um, so I had to make it quick. So I just added another little island with a cave in it. A lot of the problems I ran into were either drawing or hitbox related because I was having problems putting the... Um, you can see me struggling here with the order of things. I was trying to put the cave in the back so it looked streamlined and stuff. But I played around with, obviously, the hitbox, and so the cave was a little bit easier to get into. You know, my game has a couple problems. Like, you know, it's um, hard to get the hitboxes of stuff on some things like the chest. And God, good God, why is that audio so loud and why did I never change it? And then there's also a glitch where you just, you know, you kind of go flying up into the sky. Um, but, you know, if you look past all of that stuff, you know, it's really not that bad. And, you know, it was done. My game was done. Here it is.